So let's let's talk about the first one. So on first place, you're getting the ball. So far, you do you do perfectly perfectly finish at the basket. But the thing is, instead of to bring up your body and to have it in full extension, full mm -hmm. extent, you try a little bit to to go to go you know you you just going down instead of go all the way up you had gotcha. the the perfect you did perfect power dribble you gained the space you beat the defender and the last thing you're supposed to do is to finish all the way up as close to the basket and ideally yeah. you can you can touch your hand with the backboard so it's not gonna be blocked from no one. If this guy was a seven-one footer, uh, the end of the phase will be a block instead of you to score. You understand what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I have a, I do have a problem where I try to get the end one over the, contact, the basket. Your footwork, which is the the hardest part of this, with a power dribble to gain good space and to to beat the defender like this, you already did it. Yeah. Now the the thing is you're supposed to extend your your body. Can you see me now? Mm -hmm. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, I can see you. Okay. So So wait, so John, let's go back. John, you were about to say something that you sometimes have trouble. So, yeah, so, so sometimes when I oh, get open okay, like that. that body now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah. So sometimes when I get the spacing, I try to get the contact and the end one instead of going for the basket necessarily like so so sometimes i'll miss but i'll get the foul and sometimes i miss and i don't get a foul so instead of just worrying about finishing you know that was one of my problems too believe it or yeah. not i always want to make the guys they play me to have foul troubles but mm -hmm. believe me this is their own way to do that you go as aggressive as you can and you go as close to the basket you can leave the ball. That's the most important thing. And the yeah. most with a power dribble situation is to try to touch with your hand the backboard. As soon as you do that, it's end mm -hmm. of the story. There is no black there. Ideally, after the power dribble, when you when you pull up your body, your left supposed to protect and with the right to touch. Gotcha, the yeah. You got it. And mm -hmm. like this, you're going to gain way more fouls. So, mm -hmm. at the start of my career, when I start doing these things and analyze myself, I say, oh, let me fake a little bit to the referees. I always exactly, going to be yeah. better. But it's never like this. It's never. The referees mm -hmm. exactly want to see you going aggressively. And when somebody tries to foul you, when you go aggressively, it's going to show way more. Mm -hmm. You understand? And also, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to have the extra strength you need after the foul to be able to finish. Mm -hmm. We cool with the first one? Yep. So let me just jump in here for a second. So it sounds like you were sort of um, kind of caught between two choices. One is to, to really go and get the basket, and the other was to draw the foul. Mm -hmm. yep. Is that right? Yes. And to, if you kind of go back to that mindset of where you were, is it possible that because you were sort of split between the two, you were less like decisive and like George said, less aggressive than you might have been if you were just not, you know, forgetting all about the foul and just going for the bucket? So can yeah, yeah. you so see I, what I, I'm I talking I'm about too. right now, John? Yeah. Wherever I stop, you see exactly where I stop it. Yeah. You can see now clearly you are right and not the left, okay? If you did that on the left side, that supposedly go a little bit more weak and not the same good as your strong hand, that will be 100% block. Even that, you see, you didn't, you didn't beat him a lot. It's right yeah. there. You see it's right there. So... He, you you coming back on my what I said on the first place? If this guy was seven one a big man or seven seven tall big man, this was gonna be hundred percent a block. Yeah. Right now you didn't you didn't protect the ball. You just made the basket because you beat him 
with a good power dribble. So right here, we got the ceiling and I'm, I'm guessing because you didn't want to go by three seconds, you went out, of course, because yeah. the guard is a little bit late to pass with the ball. He didn't, he didn't fit you on the, on the first, the first second. So you got the ball. Okay. So right now, so wherever I pose it, right now you have, oh, you are almost there on technique. The legs should be a little bit more spread out. Okay. So you're going to be able to have a better up and under in case. Yeah. Because like this, if they stop you, I don't think you have anything else. No, probably okay. not. I'm probably going to be falling backwards. Your, your team spacing is horrible right now. You don't have <laughs> nobody. Number, number 21 and the other guard, I don't, I don't even know what they're doing on the same <laughs> spot. And yeah. if you ask me as a coach, this never going to happen. When you take at the top, the, the 21 should be slide on the baseline right now. Yeah. Instead of stay there. And the other guy is supposed to go on 45 for the pass. So yeah. you have two options. You don't have nothing. Uh, but right now, what, you, what you're looking for, it's good. But uh, on the first second, when you, when, you, when you just started, let's see this. When, when you just started. Okay. We, you got the ball right here, okay? I go. Boom. So, what, if you remember from the camps, the first thing we're doing when we get the ball is what? Read over the shoulders. Read yeah. over your shoulders no, no. and see yeah. what's going on. Never put the ball on the floor right away. Because if the guard was dropping in more, the ball is going to be stolen on that place. You got it? Yeah, true. So it's always in basketball, you know, the things, you know, to make a good one or a bad decision or turnover or to score, it's very close. It's very sm small tips going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, so far, this is good spacing on your legs. It's good. You're going here, okay, with, a, with kind of strike stop. And your, your finish was ideally, you know, yeah. uh, what you're doing on your hands is what you're looking for. And the legs a little bit more spread out. Yeah, and stronger base. Yeah. So, let me see here first. Okay, you're running on fast break. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, good run on your lane on the, on the fast break. You always, as a player, if you remember what we said on the, on the camps as well, you're always looking to find the easy points. And this yeah. is easy points for every player to run and fast break. Using your athletic ability, run fast, go mm -hmm. all the way down. If you see a player under the basket, try to sell him for one second and then do anything else. You mm -hmm. go always to hit on primary fast break. If you are able, then... Uh, every team has and run a secondary fast break. Yeah. You always looking for the easy points like this. And believe me, the most of the fouls you're going to get is of this situation when the team has no balance on defense. Mm -hmm. You got it. If yeah. you're always running and say to yourself in every in every game I'm playing, I'm going to run 20 times first there. I can I can tell you a hundred percent you're gonna have like ten eight to ten points from that. You got it? Yeah. You always need to say to say to yourself, I have to beat my player and I have to go faster. You got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So right now I cannot do anything. Oh. Uh so while, while George is looking, let me uh, uh, come back to what I was um, asking you before, John. Sure. Do, do, do you think that if you just are concentrated on just going for the basket and not worrying about the and one, that you're going to have a less distracted focus? 
Yeah, I think so. So you you talked about me not being decisive. I think I was decisive on trying to get the M one, not decisive about finishing the basket as much. And I think that's what George was trying to say is just focus on finishing. And then when you're aggressive, you get the N one with it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and mentally, it's the, the exact same thing. Yeah. I mean, I told you, as aggressive you go in everything you do, the most benefits you will have as a player. And mm-hmm. also, the benefit is not coming just on the game, you're just playing. Over there, on the stands, everywhere, somebody can always watching you, okay? Somebody can be there, one coach, one, one guy, he can change your future. So yeah. when, when you see to the, uh, you know, you never know who is there. And if, it's, if as a coach, you see a player is going aggressive every time and gives everything, you're always going to like him. Especially if it's a guy seven foot tall and, you know, uh, an athletic one like you are, you, you're going to have twice more chances. Yeah. Okay. So, right now, let's start the play from the start. Like there. Okay. So, okay. You got the baseline. Perfectly. Good pass. Okay. Perfect strike, stop, and perfect finish. So, right now, Right now, you didn't have any hesitation on this one. Yeah, so the play before this, he actually blocked me. Mm-hmm. And so I came back and I was like, I'm not I'm going for an one. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to just try to punch it on him. That, that's it. And yeah. it doesn't seem any, 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 any second thought on you. you yeah. just get it and finish it, finish it very hard. And mm-hmm. you see, the player doesn't have even time to think about jump or blocking you. If you exactly. try to, on this place, try to do something, he's just going to raise his hands and you're going to score end one for sure like this. Yeah. A nice backdoor cut and great finish on this one. I don't have more to add on this one. So, when so it if brings, you compare the two, John, then you're you're more decisive when you're not kind of thinking and you're just kind of just reacting in the moment and making the play. Yeah, so so he blocked me on the play before that. So I, I wasn't trying to be hesitant or anything. I was just thinking about dunking on him. Stop you. Mm. And, you know, he, he went late. So also, the other thing of the most of the bigs do, sometimes you think about the counter without reason. You think yeah. about the second move, Without the player take off your first move. Yeah, I'm kind of the opposite. I only have one move in my head, and then I, if he takes it away, I'm, I have well, nothing else. To be honest with you, you don't supposed to have the move on the head. That's going to change. Yeah. The thing that's going to change you as a player and your whole career in basketball is how you read the player. How fast mm-hmm. you can read the legs. If you remember what we said on the camps, if you see on this place, his left leg over your legs, that means you spin down and you go baseline. If you see his left leg parallel, that means you always go on the middle, like you did. Mm -hmm. And you always want to go to the middle because you have more, more, more opportunities. You can do more things. Yeah, yeah, there's more place to go from yeah. there. Any questions about that? Me, so so the only difference between this hook and the hook earlier, the hook earlier I protected with my left hand. This mm-hmm. one, I kind of went over him. Um, yeah. Like I faced the basket more because I feel like he wasn't guarding me. So yes. I just went over him. I mean, I mean, if you feel it like this, because sometimes, you know, you have this feeling on your back, you can read whenever it's ready and whenever it's not. But I'm telling you, I had really some really bad experience of the guys. I thought, oh, I have them. And I didn't protect <laughs> the ball and the, and the ball went to the bleachers after Jeez. a hard block. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. some guys you're going to play against, they're way, way more athletic than you. They're mm-hmm. jumping 
faster, they are way more explode. So you always need to have any consideration. But before you start any game, that's why I told you, you, you read the player, you have a scouting report. Mm -hmm, so you can see exactly. who you play against, who you're facing. You play against other size big men. You play against uh, really big men, uh, slower than you. It's, it's way, way different story. Yeah. How you're supposed to, to beat them. You see the player on the clips, how they play defense as well. The, the bad thing, some of the coaches doing the scouting, they, they're giving us so many, so many hours uh, watching the players just what they do offensively. And they don't show us how they do defensively so much. Mm -hmm. That's wrong because you need to watch them what they do defensively so you know exactly what, what this guy is doing. He's jumping on the fakes. He's staying more back. He play clear defense. Um, he's aggressive. And also, you know, Mitz, if you agree with that, I was also, um, you know, read the mentality of the player. I read the way how they getting upset and how if I was seeing the guy was going overwhelmed, I was always going on him. I mean, I want to take him out of the game with any, any way I could. So if you see the guy, if you see the guy is going uh, like crazy in the first place or they, 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 they call something on him and go crazy, you, you always need to, to play him. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so John, did, did, did that, did, do you recall ever kind of doing that or no, noting like what George is talking about with the player? So they yeah. you know, take advantage yeah, of, course. of his, um, um, his hesitancies. What, what was the last thing you said? So that you could take advantage of him if he was like George said. Yeah, so, so the time I'm him. remembering is that I, I played a, a center. He was probably like a couple inches shorter than me, but he was really heavy, like 400 pounds. And I saw I, my whole game plan was running the floor and doing – little shot takes and going around him. That, that was everything. And I was never really in the post when I was trying to score on him. Uh, so the other thing I want to um, jump on, what George was saying is if you're um, – if the defender is about to block you or you're not able to make your, your, your shot or your move, mm -hmm. one thing you can do when you're kind of working on your own is go back and picture those possessions and at the exact point that you're kind of realize you got in trouble visualizing your mind's eye uh like a, a an alternate move that you could that you could take even if it's not one you typically do in your mind's eye you could try that out mm -hmm. and and that would help you kind of um ha, you know have your um more kind of ammunition in I your totally yeah. river, as it were. I totally agree with that. And especially when you're watching yourself and you're supposed to watch yourself anytime you have the opportunity, mm -hmm. even for practices. Really, I had some coaches, they record every practice and they made us see every practice. But you can <laughs> imagine how much that helped me. Yeah. I said to myself many times, oh, I thought on this practice I did great. And, and when I watched the practice, I was like, oh, my God. I was discussing myself. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because that's the truth. Sometimes you cannot realize exactly what you're doing. But when you see yourself and really be honest with yourself, that's changing a lot. So mm -hmm. let's – we good with that? Let's yeah. go to the next position to see. So, okay, good. Okay, good card. The defender forgot about you. Fancy rebound. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, it's quick. <laughs> so, all right here. So, <laughs> so if you ask me right now, What's the situation over here? After so much, I don't know what the guy is doing. I mean, they try to run for fast break without even grab the defensive rebound first. Yeah. That seems to me, I mean, 
so you got the ball. You did a little fake on him. Good job. Good footworks, though. Mm -hmm. Even from that, if you didn't have nobody, you can do one extra pivot on your left and finish with a layup right away. Yeah. You will be able to do that. Even to throw the ball in the backboard, just get it and dunk it. It's easy. Yeah, I, I never tried that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, in a situation like this, and it's perfect, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. But the best is, you know, exactly what you did. The simplest one, nice assist. Right now, there's nobody there. It's not much. Good running on the floor, though. I see you score on the same game six points, eight points. How much you score on these situations? I mean, same game. Yeah. How many points you score of fast breaks? Do you remember? Uh, probably like six or eight, yeah. Yeah, six or eight. It's huge. It's a huge number, you understand? Yeah, One easy. first rebound, 10 points. Four free throws, 14 points. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And you have always a, a strong base. So, okay. It's good penetration, good cut. And I guess dunk. Okay. Perfect. I don't... Okay, good. Good timing too. I don't know. So, so, so in the in the past, I've had coaches tell me to rim run, but a lot of the times, if I stay like short corner, I have time to take off oh. and get more opportunities. What do you oh. think about this? Okay, great, great, great question. Okay, John, when when the defender, when the uh, when the offenders, I mean the offense guys, offensive guys, they running in to the paint, you're supposed to take off and give them the space. And mm -hmm. also, if you see that your defender losing you, the only job you're supposed to do is cut behind the back. Okay. So right now you score three times of back door cut. Mm -hmm. You just cut right away behind the back. If you see the guy doesn't pay attention to you, it doesn't be necessary. You just, in the better defenders, you're not going to get the ball like this. They're not going to mm -hmm. uh, leave you open or going to lose you in the first place. But yeah. if, you, if you have a continuation in your cut, so you can see, okay. So, okay. Let's go here. It's the alley -oop. You see now it's right back door. He doesn't pay attention to you. He just, he has necessary to go to help right now, this guy. Yeah. So even if you don't get the ball from there, you can easily push him out and get the offensive bound. You understand what I mean? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. It's I have the all best. the position. Yes. It's not the best like many, many bigs they do right now. Oh, I'm just going to sit there and going to have an easy shot. Mm -hmm. Right now, you can have easily two points of layup. Yeah. Layups as the most effective uh, baskets you can have in basketball. Second ones are the three points. And mm -hmm. the, the last ones and the less effective shots in basketball is mid-range shots right now. For sure, yeah. And this is what the static said. It's not me. So mm -hmm. you always play with the numbers. Basketball is, it's, it's math as well. You score more, you win. I mean, so simple. Yeah. So, good cut. Okay. Is it letting you work it or did I take it away? Oh, there you go. Okay. Good. Okay, perfect. Oh. Okay, good. And? I didn't, I didn't dunk this one. They got mad at me. <laughs> okay. For me, honestly, I do not care. I mean, exactly. I assume you score, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't care to be, to be attractive, my game for the fans so much. And believe me, the coaches, they don't care. It's about, oh, I give, I feed him the post. He finished that, I'm happy. He missed that because he tried to dunk. I don't care. You know, I hate that. Yeah. Every time I need to be effective, but 
uh, I feel you have better timing and uh, you work a little bit better on this. When I first met you, you didn't have really good timing to get the ball. Mm. But right now, yeah. you, you're jumping better, I think. Yeah. And even your vertical looks a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole 